Welcome to ChemDoodle Shorts. I'm Mary, your ChemDoodle Pro. Let's learn about balancing chemical equations. In any reaction, there are reactants and products. Reactants are what you start with in a reaction, while products are the substances formed in a reaction. A reaction can be represented with an equation, which includes a reaction arrow. Reactants are placed to the left of the reaction arrow, and products are to the right of the arrow. In a chemical reaction, atoms are neither gained nor lost. Any atoms present as reactants should also be present in the products. This is the law of conservation of mass. So chemical equations should be balanced to properly express the ratios needed for a given reaction. Consider this chemical equation. Hydrogen gas and oxygen gas combine to produce water, H2O. There are hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms in the reactants, and likewise in the products. However, this equation is not balanced. The number of atoms on the reactant side does not equal the number of atoms on the product side. We can adjust the numbers of atoms in the reactants or the products to balance an equation. Let's look at the structures of these molecules to better visualize this equation. There is one molecule of diatomic hydrogen. The subscript 2 tells us there are two hydrogen atoms in this molecule. There is also one molecule of diatomic oxygen. Again, the subscript 2 tells us there are two oxygen atoms in this molecule. Finally, there is one molecule of water. The subscript 2 tells us there are two hydrogen atoms. When there is no number, we can assume that it is one, so there is one oxygen atom in this water molecule. When balancing an equation, there should be the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the reaction arrow. There are two hydrogen atoms on the reactant side, and two hydrogen atoms on the product side. There is the same number on both sides, so the hydrogens are balanced. Let's look at the oxygen atoms. On the left side, there are two oxygen atoms, but on the right side, there is only one. This is unbalanced. To balance the oxygen atoms, let's add another water molecule to the right side for a total of two oxygen atoms. Now, there are two oxygen atoms on either side of the equation. After adding the second water molecule, however, the hydrogen atoms are no longer balanced. There are four hydrogen atoms on the product side, and only two on the reactant side. To balance this, let's add another hydrogen molecule. Now, there are four hydrogen atoms on either side of the equation. The equation is balanced. To balance an equation in ChemDoodle, select all reactants, products, and the reaction arrow. Select the reaction menu and balance reaction. You will see the balanced equation and a component table with the coefficients of the balanced equation. In this reaction, two molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen to form two molecules of water. This is now a balanced equation. While drawing molecules can be a useful visualization when balancing equations, it may not be the most efficient when there is a complex equation or other constraints. Instead, it can be helpful to create a table as you account for the number of types of atoms on the reactant side and the product side. Consider this combustion reaction of methane. To balance this equation, first count up the number of each type of atom on either side of the reaction arrow. In the reactants, there is one carbon, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. In the products, there is one carbon, two hydrogens, and two oxygens from the carbon dioxide, and one oxygen from the water. Two plus one equals three oxygen atoms. Be mindful that atoms of the same type may be spread across multiple molecules, as is the case of oxygen in the products here, so be sure to check each molecule. Next, compare the number of each type of atom on the reactant side to the product side. There is one carbon each on the left and the right, so the carbons are balanced. There are four hydrogens on the reactant side, but only two on the product side. To balance the hydrogens, we can add another water molecule for a total of two molecules of water. In each molecule of water, there are two hydrogen atoms, so two times two is four total hydrogen atoms now. There is the same number of hydrogen atoms on either side of the equation, so the hydrogens are balanced. However, changing the coefficient before water also changed the number of oxygen atoms. Now there are two times one equals two oxygen atoms from the water. Remember that if there is no number for the subscript or coefficient, we assume that it is one. Two oxygen atoms from water plus two oxygen atoms from carbon dioxide is four total oxygen atoms on the right side. On the left side, there are only two oxygen atoms. To balance this, we can add a second molecule of O2 by adding the coefficient 2 in front of O2. Remember that we can only change coefficients, not subscripts, when balancing equations. Now, there are 2 times 2 equals four total oxygen atoms on the left side, so the oxygens are balanced.
there's the same number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens on the reactant side as on the product side. This chemical equation is balanced. One molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen to produce one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. Balanced equations help to properly express the ratios needed for a given reaction. They are necessary in order to better understand a reaction and perform any calculations. As you continue to practice balancing equations, you will become more fluent in the process. Thanks for watching ChemDoodle Shorts.